the next question comes from Gangsta Gigs <laughs> out of right. San Leandro, okay. which is near my hometown of Oakland. Okay. I was wondering, what is your reaction to Proposition 8, and would you vote yes or no on it? You know, I, I've stated my opposition to this. Uh, I think it's unnecessary. Uh, you know, I, I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman. Um, and uh, I'm not in favor of gay marriage. But when you start uh, playing around with constitutions just to prohibit somebody uh, who cares about another person, uh, it, it just seems to me that that's not what America's about. Usually our constitutions expand liberties. They don't contract them. Uh, and, you know, uh, what I believe is, is that if we have strong civil unions out there that provide legal rights to same-sex couples, uh, that they can visit each other in a hospital if they get sick, they can transfer property to each other. If they've got benefits, uh, you know, they can make sure that those benefits apply to their partners. Uh, you know, I, I think that's the direction we need to go. And I think young people uh, are ahead of the curve on this for the most part. Um, you know, that I think their attitude uh, generally is that, uh, you know, uh, we should be respectful of all people. And, and that's the kind of politics I want to practice. So you would vote? I would vote no on the proposition. Okay. Thank you. My next question is from Joseph from Red Hook, Brooklyn. I know at least 40 people who were murdered simply because they grew up in a climate of hopelessness. How can we begin to inject hope into the inner city and reach those deemed unreachable? Yeah, well, it, look, it, it's a big problem, and we're not going to turn it around overnight. So I don't want people thinking that I'm president and suddenly you don't have any gangs on the streets and you don't have any drugs being peddled on the corners. Mm -hmm. But I think that. You know, over the course of eight, ten years, we can start moving in a different direction. And, and it involves starting when they're young, mm -hmm. investing in early childhood education, making sure that our kids are getting a healthy start, having a comprehensive health care program so that every young person is getting you know, the checkups they need, if they need eyeglasses, if they have a hearing impairment, uh, you know, they're getting their va vaccinations, whatever it is, making sure they're healthy and happy when they start school. That's point number one. Point number two is improving K through 12 education by improving our teachers, giving them higher salaries, also giving them more support, having after school programs and summer school programs so that kids have some place to go, uh, and having a criminal justice system that is focused more on prevention and not just apprehending criminals. Uh, you know, you look at, for example, uh, the way we deal with nonviolent. Uh, you know, low-level drug offenders, uh, first-time drug offenders, it, it turns out the drug courts, uh, which force them to go into rehabilitation, where they're very carefully monitored, uh, is actually much more successful in preventing them from going back into a life of crime mm -hmm. than just throwing them uh, into, into jail somewhere. And if we have a smart approach, and not just a tough approach, but also a smart and tough approach, to how we deal with the criminal justice system, that can have an impact as well. Uh, there's a great example of the, uh, the, the Harlem Children's Zone. A guy named Jeffrey Canada started this up. He's got a comprehensive approach to young people in that area. And you're starting to see you know, uh, graduation rates go up, college attendance rates go up, uh, reductions in terms of delinquency. So we can make progress on this stuff, but it takes sustained effort. And over the long term in the inner city, we've obviously got to create jobs. Uh, so people have a pathway they can see, okay, you know, if I do the right thing, that's where I'm going to end up. Um, and right now, I think too many young people don't see that they have choices. And so economic development in these communities, making small business loans to communities, making sure that uh, we're building infrastructure and hiring young people to work, for example, in uh, making uh, buildings in the inner city more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. That's good for the homeowner or the apartment dweller. It's also an a, opportunity, though, to train young people to insulate homes and, and, and do other stuff that might lead uh, to a career in construction someday. What about the relationship between the citizens and law enforcement? What can we do to improve that? Well, you know, one of the things, obviously, law enforcement is generally a local issue, mm -hmm. city, state. Uh, but one thing I think a president can do is to have a, a justice department that is thinking about working with local law enforcement uh, 
to, to create best practices. So instead of waiting until there's some question about uh, has there been a civil rights violation, have the Justice Department work with these law enforcement agencies ahead of time, saying, you know what, if you, know, if you want a, a, a fair, just uh, law enforcement system that has good relationships with the community, here's what we found has worked uh, over the course of time. So for example, when I was in Illinois, uh, we set up uh, one of the first in the nation uh, laws prohibiting racial profiling. Mm -hmm. But we didn't just say, don't racial profile. We, pro we went in and get, uh, had the state gather statistics in terms of local law enforcement, help them to train their uh, folks in terms of what's an appropriate traffic stop, how should you treat people. Uh, it's not perfect, but what it does is it creates a, a different kind of culture mm -hmm. uh, that is going to be thinking about how do you deal with a, a community.